Oh, Shalom Rastafari, uh, a news flash. This is, uh, let's date this right here. This is um, Sunday, uh, March uh, 31st, and many of the Western Gentile Christians celebrate this as, um, as Easter Sunday. Okay, so so it may be Easter Sunday, according to the Western Gentile interpretation or misinterpretation. So folks are talking about, well, happy Easter, happy Easter Sunday, so forth and so on. But I'm here to share with you, it's not really, right? it's, it's not really, according to the so-called tradition, if you follow Christian tradition, then this is Easter Sunday. Is it Easter? Is this truly resurrection first day? Actually, it's first day, not Sunday. It's only Sunday if you follow the Romanist tradition consciously or unconsciously. And unfortunately, most Christians unconsciously, although they might say, I ain't no Roman Catholic, but they are following Roman Catholic tradition even with Sunday, so-called Sunday worship. Right? And now folks say, well, we worship on Sunday because this is the day that Christ resurrected. Right? This is, this is resurrection, you know, it's resurrection Sunday. But the whole sun worship and the whole renaming of the first day. You have to remember that in the Hebrew, in the Hebraic, which is our root as black Jews, Ethiopian Hebrews, and elect Rastafari, and, and really for all Christians, whether the Jew, or Gentile, whether black or white, if they are really in the word, the truth, and the life of Jesus Christ, of Jesus Christos. And let's bring this right here. So he is, he is risen, and so are we. Therefore, if we're risen, why don't we get up, stand up, stand up for our rights? In other words, why don't we get up and stand up? Right, we get up and stand up for our rights. Well, first thing, let's check the time. Because most folks are lost in mistranslation. Therefore, they are seeing signs, but they can't really recognize the sign of the time because, they, you know, Antichrist has sought to change laws, right? Black is white and white is black, as well as time. So the laws and the time. So is it really... Easter, when, and the whole Easter thing comes in from that same Gentile tradition that's crept in. In fact, you find Easter one time and only in the King James Version of the Bible, right? You find Easter one time. And really, if you look at the underlying um, Greek text of the New Testament, it's really Fasica or Pesach. Now, Fasica or Passover as the Hebrews were commanded, as our ancestors were commanded to keep it, let's understand this because really it's next Sunday that you should, um, you know, keep the thought. The thought is what counts, you know. He is risen and so are we. If we are willing to get up and stand up for our rights, if we are willing to, as they say, speak truth to the so-called temporal and Gentile worldly powers that be, in the black Moshia, in the true Christ, in our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, some are offended by black, but remember, it is, it is Rome and Romanism and being romantic, you have the counterfeit Caesar's Christ or Rome's Christ, Caesar Bougier's, right, which is Antichrist, and you're worshiping that false image. And remember what it says about those who worship right, his image and his mark, right, there is no hope, you understand, this is why so many people run around hopeless, right, because they are caught up, right, in the confusion, in the deception of the deceiver, but we are coming out of Babylon, coming out of spiritual Babelism and Romanism, right, so let's touch on this for a moment, and because it's something that, that just kind of reoccurred to me, and since this is what they call Easter Sunday, right? <laughs> Since it's called Easter Sunday, let's look at something for a moment. Let's go to 
in the time that we have here in this short video right here, let us go to, to, to Leviticus chapter 23. Leviticus chapter 23. Now, most Gentile Christians are, are in Romanism, whether they call themselves Protestant or, or Protestant um, Methodist or Protestant Episcopalian or Protestant Pentecostal or Protestant Baptist or whatnot, the Pope already told us and the Pope told them that all of the Christian churches in the Western Gentile tradition are basically daughters of Babylon because they follow after the same confusion. There's no scriptural right, basis for what people believe as Christians, right, of so many things, but one of them is this whole Sunday worship. The only um, plausible basis is because Christ, according to the year and the time that our Lord was crucified, our master Adonai, Adonai was crucified, right, and let's bring this right here, only one Black Friday, only one Good Friday, the only good N-word, our negus, negus Christ, right, or the Negro, the Negro Christ was crucified for us and for them who receive him in spirit and truth. Hallelujah and amen. Now, when we look at the calendar, the schedule, the Hebrew schedule, and, and, and some of y'all might not have gone there, but you need to go there and come here with us to Leviticus, Leviticus chapter 23. Now, here in New York, um, people who have cars sometimes look for alternative, or alternate side parking, you know, because they don't, they get a ticket, so they have to move it back and forth. On Sunday, these things are suspended, so that's like a, a arrest, a, a kind of arrest for them. They don't have to move their car back and forward and find a parking space because this is a part of the whole Roman world order or the new world order or Romanism. And the Roman Sunday law has a lot to do with what's going on, right? Um, and so my earthly told me, well, you know, this is tomorrow, which is Monday, is a Jewish holiday. And now, as Hebrews, it can only be one particular um, holy day or holiday. And Leviticus chapter 23 gives us the 411 on that. First of all, we have three particular this is spring. This is the spring. Um, this is the spring um, holy days or the spring holidays, according to our Hebrew our Hebrew uh, faith, according to the faith of the real Moshia Yeshua. And the first is Passover, which is for the fourteenth. Then on the fifteenth, right on the fifteenth, for seven days, right from the first day and the last day is a, and the seventh day is a holy convocation. So as we read in Leviticus chapter 23, verses 6, right, verses 6 to verse 8, verse 8 says, But ye shall offer an offering made by fire to Yahweh, yod heh wow heh seven days. In the seventh day is an holy convocation. Ye shall do no servile work therein, or no occupational labor. Now some folks will be like, well, you know, I'm a Hebrew. Should I call in my boss? You know, you first should, should study and learn what this is about and get, you know, precept upon precept, you know, line upon line. You know what I mean? Don't, don't try to fake a funk right now just for, for that. You know what I'm saying? You know, we're still, we're still under, we're under grace, right? We are in-laws but under grace. Just keep that, if you can keep that in mind as well. Now, what's interesting is that Christ, right, being risen, was risen on that first day, that first day in the seven-day week, and the first day, what we call Ehud, right? We don't call it Sunday in our Ethiopic and Hebraic and true Beit Israel, black Hebrew, black Jewish tradition. We don't call it Sunday. We call it first day, and that's Ehud. So, so that's all Western Gentile mistranslation. Right, so that whole idea of Sunday being Sunday is only when you are under Romanism, right? When you have not come out of Babylon, the word is come out of Babylon, my people. So all, all faithful in the Moshiach in Christos, whether Jew or Gentile, whether black or white, really need to understand this: that tomorrow, which would be, I think, was it April? It'll be April Fool's Day, the first, right? Mm-hmm. April Fool's Day 
is actually the seventh day of the unleavened, right, the unleavened bread, right, the seven-day memorial of the unleavened bread, right? So we've been speaking a lot on the unleavened bread and still got other postings to post on the unleavened bread. When we get to verse 9, it says, And Yahweh spake to Musa, or Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel. So this applies to us as children of the Ethiopians, Amos 9 and 7. And say to them, 